if you start to see any sorts of signs of wear, so say for instance on a system of magnums, they're quite popular at wearing quite quickly, you know, maybe when all the system of magnums are made, yeah, they were made 1.1 millimeter tiny, or sort of too small, compared to the say TM EG 1000s, you know, um, or they generally might be soft metal and poo, right? But you just don't know. So what we do is we're talking about, you know, parts and how they interact. And it's basically, you know, try and fig figure it out as opposed to just throwing away your system of magnum motor because it wears too quickly, say for instance. So I like to just go, I haven't really had a problem with too tight on these, but I have had a problem with too loose, where obviously if only a small portion of the pinion is touching here, it's going to wear quite quickly, either this or the, or the, um, either the bevel gear or the pinion gear. So I'll go with quite a small one here. Uh, I think this is like a 0.1, like as small as you can get. Obviously, it varies because of because of the heights of the um, the different heights of the bearings and different heights of pushings, and obviously you know how, how sort of high and high they are, how thick they were made. So like we did before, I go quite thick on the top side of these. Let's say it's an art and different gearboxes. Don't just copy what I'm doing or anything like that. Just obviously it's the principle, you know, of taking each gearbox on its own merits. Um, Right, so it's tight, so now we check for height. Is there any movement? We've got oh, 0.005 of movement there, which as I say, is you want tight, ever so slightly. You don't want it too tight. So we know for a fact there that there's not any sort of excess play, which is what you really want to get rid of. Uh, and we know for a fact that just moving this here is so effortless. You know, just if if you can do it just as easy as this, you know, the only thing stopping it here is the piston that we've left in there, which we probably should have took out, just to check the overall speed of it. So we know now that that's absolutely 100%. That's pretty much it, really. I mean, you can. People often wonder about the uh, height of the, um, how to sort of know how far you have to wind the, uh, the the motor in, obviously to how it connects. Well, I say that obviously if you can't see, as you look through here, um, if you think about the center of it, where the potentially the motor is going to be going, it's going to be sitting nice in the center, and obviously the teeth are going to be sitting off to one side. If you can't see nearly all of those teeth, then I say, you haven't got it low enough, all right? So um, remember that you don't necessarily have to have shims either. Um, you know, there, there's no rule that says you have to have them. It's just simply to, you know, to get the heights right. So um, and you assume that there's going to be some sort of play which you want to remove. So we always start with shims. Um, but obviously, if it's exceptionally tight in your gearbox, just ditch them completely. So, um, yeah. So we know here we can see plenty of the teeth coming through. Um, I say if they were too high up then potentially it's gonna get excess wear on the on the motor gear there. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty much pretty much it. So we've gone over the principles and stuff. Uh, when you fit in uh, bearings or bushings, um, for the final thing when you know you've got everything just nice and right, uh, get some um, bearing lock, so which is basically like a, it's like a lock tight, but the next sort of two up actually um, in strength. Uh, and it's so hard that what it'll do, it'll, it'll hold the bearings or the bushings in place around the outside um, so that obviously when the gears spin, they don't potentially spin the bearings or bushings. Because uh, obviously if it's 
of his bearings and they're spinning you're basically defeating the whole point of having bearings um, and obviously bushings um, you don't want them spinning so that potentially they widen the hole and then eventually we'll get a like a sideways lateral movement going on there and obviously eventually you have to replace your gearbox there um, or you cause some damage and have to cost you some money um, well if you're going to fit bearings fit some bearing oil in there and uh, the bushings don't really need it um, but then like if, if you've if you've if you've checked that there's definitely not catching or anything I mean sometimes you'll if say for instance I took this top off and basically it was very difficult to pull the top off because the the gears shafts are, are catching inside the bushings then I'd say it's a little bit too tight uh, you do however want it a little bit tight on the bearings so that it catches the inside of the bearing and spins it and obviously the whole purpose of having a bearing you see so um, but yeah I say I think that's pretty much everything covered uh, any other questions or if you think I've got it all wrong then uh, just uh, let us know on the, the old Eagle 6 um, YouTube but uh, I hope that's helped everybody uh, and thank you very much for listening. Cheers.